ice cold rinks and early morning practices across New England, hockey players and parents are taking part in the game they love. For many of these kids, the ultimate goal is to someday be a professional hockey player for the hometown team. Until recently, that goal was only attainable by men. Options for women to play professional hockey were very limited, but not anymore. Back in the day, um, there really weren't a lot of resources. There were only 15 teams when I first started coaching in 1987. So really, uh, the NCAA has boomed, and now it's time for the pro game to boom. And now Kelly Stack takes over. In front tonight! Oh, oh and scores! Say hello to the Boston Blades of the Canadian Women's Hockey League, the best kept secret in New England hockey. Yeah, it is. It is a really good kept secret. Um, you know, I wish, I wish we had more marketing dollars, to be honest, to really get the word out there because we've got tremendous role models in this league. We've got educated women. Everyone's been to college. They've graduated from amazing institutions in their own respect. Um, but not only that, we've got a great hockey product. Now, pick it with it. Pick it going in. Pepsi Doodles. Oh, wow. Oh. There is no question about the level of hockey being played in the CWHL. Started in 2007 by some former Canadian national team players, the league now features five teams four in Canada and one in Boston. Here's a steal by Pickett and the slot glove save by the netminer Lamonte. All the teams have Olympic players from the greatest rivalry in women's hockey, the U.S. versus Canada. The Blades are fortunate to have players from both. We've got, uh, I guess for lack of better words, a saturated version of U.S. versus Canada every weekend for $15. I mean, are you kidding me? Instead of flying to Russia and spending all that money, you can just go in your backyard and watch us play. While these are the best female hockey players on the planet, the league and its teams are still very much a startup situation. The Blades have no trainer, no equipment manager, limited ice time, and, oh yes, none of the players get paid. Obviously, I said I started with the Blades because it was the next best option. Um, to keep playing hockey, and that's what I want to do. It feels like I'm going back to my peewee days where I just started hockey. You're driving yourself to the rink again. You're kind of taking care of your own equipment again. That little adversity, I think, it brings us back to, back to where we were, where we started, and why we started playing hockey. It's like, for the love of the game. These athletes obviously love the game, but make no mistake, they're also in because they want to win. In the NHL, the top prize is the Stanley Cup, in the CWHL, it's the Clarkson Cup. You know, everyone wants to win a championship. We set out every day when we get on the ice to win. And uh, I think you wouldn't be a competitor if you, if you didn't expect that of yourself. In an age of hyperinflated athlete salaries and some even bigger egos, the Boston Blades are a collective breath of fresh air. They are true role models, not only for today's female athletes, but for tomorrow's. When I watch my players interact with the community, I, I swear to God every time I get tears in my eyes because it's something that I've dreamed of my whole life is to see this happen. So on each cone, she's going to pivot backwards, forward. Be quick, take the puck around the cone with you. There you go. Really take the initiative to, um, to the grow the game through the blades because that's, it's not just about playing hockey anymore. It's, it's we're building kind of um, a pro league for, for future generations, and that's the bigger picture. Up next, we'll hit the road with the Blades for an early season road trip to Montreal when the Celebrity Spotlight series continues right after this.